Well, hello and welcome back. So today I'll be doing something quite a bit different from what I normally do. I was sent this Tesla car from a subscriber, Chris, with the goal of trying to paint it to match his real car. The trick to all this is that his car is wrapped in a holographic film. This film, when hit by different angles of light, gives off a color-changing rainbow type effect, which is really neat to look at. Now, originally he sent over some of the wrap material and asked if I could apply it to the car, and that's what I had planned on doing. However, when I started playing around and testing the film, I found a few issues. The first was that the film was a bit thick for wrapping a small toy like this, and the other, and more important, was that the effect didn't seem to work as well at this much smaller scale. This led me to wonder if there were any paints that could produce this effect that would work better at this scale. And upon looking around, I actually found several candidates that might work. And so I proceeded to order them up. We'll take a look at them here in a bit, but first let's get this car apart. Now normally the car has the manufacturer written on the bottom of the base, but in this case all we have is a Model 3 and Made in China. So I don't know who manufactured this toy. But I will say that it was very nice of them to use two screws to hold it together. This makes taking it apart a breeze. Now you never know what to expect with a car like this, but I was quite surprised at the build quality of this toy. The two upper roof supports were a complete shocker to me. I just assumed the roof would be all plastic. But no, it's actually supported. Also, the tail lights and headlights are plastic inserts. Again, a complete shocker as one would expect tampos instead do cut down on cost. All in all, a rather well put together car. All of this, especially the plastic inserts, will make my life much easier later on. Once all the parts are removed, I can go ahead and remove the paint. Here again, I'm using aircraft paint stripper. So one of the items Chris sent was a new set of wheels and axles to replace the rather generic looking ones on this car. However, looking at the wheel axle assembly, I was a bit surprised to find that the axle is all plastic and made of clear plastic to boot. The assembly is installed on plastic post and then the plastic post is melted to form a kind of rivet over the assembly to hold it in place. I can remove the whole assembly by using a Dremel to remove the plastic of the post. This would free it and you could pull it straight off. The wheels themselves just pop off the ends of the axles and are easy enough to remove. My original thought was to just turn down the axles to fit the size of the new wheels, but there was no way I could reproduce the snap and the wheels would just roll off. On top of all this, the new wheels are a tad bit bigger than the old ones, and I needed to raise the car up ever so slightly to allow the wheels to fit. I ran through a bunch of different ideas, but what I ended up doing was building the axle in Tinkercad and then 3D printing the axle assembly, but with a hole running down the length of it. I could then install the axle assembly on the two posts, and using the holes on the side as guides, drill through the posts. This would allow me to keep the post and the alignment that they provide and also use them as a way to pin the assembly to the base as the metal axles will run through the assembly and the post to lock them in place. Also by designing the part, I could lower the axle position to allow the wheels to fit, just barely, without rubbing against the wheel wells. So while I was working on the base, I took some time to paint the body in a primer and then lightly sand the primer with some 1000 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. After this, I painted the car in a black acrylic. Almost all of these holographic paints require a black undercoat to work. So let's talk a little bit about color changing paint or holographic paints. As I said before, I bought several different types and then tested them to see how well they work. The first to check out is this spastic holographic paint. This paint, as I understand it, is intended for clear bodies of RC cars and you actually paint the inside of the body in reverse. So you would paint this first and then paint the black undercoat over it. You would then flip the body over and the clear plastic would act as the gloss overcoat. I really figured this is what I would end up using, but upon further testing, painting the top of the plastic lid I'm holding, I found it suffered from the same issue as the film. That is that I couldn't get any real color changing effect. However, the paint inside the clear plastic bottle works really well, so it probably works as intended on clear plastic RC bodies, but not how I'm planning on using it. Next up is this Color Shift paint by Rust-Oleum. And this is an amazing paint, and I can't wait to try it out on some future project. However, I can't use it here as it has a very noticeable blue base color. But outside of that, it has a rather neat color shift, but it's hard to show on camera. In fact, 
You'll see that being sort of an issue throughout this video. These effects are difficult to capture and require very specific lighting conditions to work. But trust me, this one would be perfect if not for the blue. Next is this color shift wrap by Duplicolor. Here again, it's a blue base color, but here the color shift is almost completely absent, or at least I couldn't get it to work very well. Last, this is a wrap and it is not intended to be permanent. So it may be useful for some project out there that you have, but it won't work here. And the final test subject is this dragonfly glaze, which I bought just to round out the other paints. And to my utter surprise, it blows them all away. And you'll understand why here in a moment. You'll notice that the lid is cut in half with a lot of the flake on top and almost none on the bottom. This is because I tried to use it in my airbrush and the bottom part is a result. The top was painted on with, well, a real brush. So the reason this works so well compared to the others is that the flake is much larger. This paint is not intended to be sprayed. In fact, I couldn't get it to spray through my airbrush. It's supposed to be brushed on and you might be guessing what I'm about to do next. Yeah, it's almost as painful to watch as it was for me to actually do it, but this stuff works so much better than the rest, I couldn't help but give it a try. So it looks like it goes on really thick, and it does, but in reality, the solution evaporates and allows the flake to settle down and stick to the surface. So in a way, it's only the flake I'm painting on with a small amount of binders. I ended up doing three coats of this dragonfly glaze and then set the car aside to cure. After it dried, I applied a clear coat over the glaze. I apologize, I, I lost the footage of the glaze all by itself, and I wish I hadn't as the clear coat ended up being a bit of a mistake. The glaze by itself had a semi-gloss look to it, and I thought I would take it to the next level by giving it a high gloss. But instead, what ended up happening is the gloss ended up showing imperfections in my brushed on paint that were not as noticeable before the gloss. The other issue was that the gloss took over a month to cure. The paint just recently cured enough to handle the car and allow me to finish. So I don't recommend putting a gloss over the Dragonfly glaze. So once the gloss cured, I went ahead and started putting the car back together, starting with the tail lights. These were easy enough, you just push them in until you hear them snap into place. For the headlights, I used a chrome pen to paint in the reflective areas in the lights, uh, just like the original, and then after that dried, the lenses were popped in. The windshield and roof plastic ended up being a real pain to get back in. There are two plastic pegs along with two side pegs and two front pegs and two back pegs that all need to be put into place without destroying the paint. This took some time, but eventually I was able to get it in without harming the paint. Moving on to the wheels, I airbrushed the chrome wheels black and then sprayed them with a matte clear coat. To install them, you're supposed to push them onto the axle. I found this not to be possible and instead had to use a drill to open up the diameter of the hole in the hub so that the hub can go on much easier. Failure to do this will cause you to use too much pressure and break the plastic spokes in the hub. This ended up being another setback in this project as I had to wait for the slow boat from China for a new set of wheels. Luckily I needed that time for the gloss to cure anyway. Once the wheels were on, I could put the car back together and then you can see the final result which looks like I dipped the car into a pile of glitter. Yeah, it doesn't look all that great under my studio lighting. This is one of those weird things, sort of like filming glow-in-the-dark items. It's just really hard to catch the effects on camera. It's something you can see with your eyes, but the camera doesn't see it. In fact, it's much easier to shoot a picture of, and strange enough, it shows up much better if the camera's out of focus. Essentially, the car shifts from red to blue as you change the angle of the light hitting it. It only does this in one area, so there's never a moment that the entire car is in color. It's an effect that I'm sure works well as it's scaled up and seems to work really well on flat objects. The smaller and more curved the object is, like a toy car, the more centralized the effect is. Unfortunately, it doesn't make for a very mind-blowing video, but if you could hold the car in your hand, you would probably find it interesting to look at. But of course, I'm always interested in your thoughts and ideas and how I might make this work better or at least how I can maybe film it better. So put your thoughts below and I'll see you next time.